Hello everyone, it's Ron from Ron Carter Photography and today we're going to talk about WebP. Now what I've did, well WebP versus JPEG and the advantages. And I'm going to show you exactly how I go about using WebP and the advantages of it. It's going to be a short video. Anyway, so I've already opened up uh, Cloudinary and here it is, it's C-L-O-U-D-I-N-A-R-Y dot com. This is a... Uh, a resource where you can store your images and size them and put them in the format that you desire. But anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my dashboard. I'm just going to pull up an image that, oh, actually I'm going to my media library. You know, when you set up an account, you log in, uh, let it come up to one. So this is a, this is a header image that I had that I used on the uh, beginning of my website. And as you can see, this is a JPEG format. And if you look at it, this uh, image is 547 KB. Now, how this is an advantage of Web, WebP is that WebP is a, a futuristic uh, format for designing websites. Uh, most browsers today are accepting it. But what it does, it actually allows your, your website to speed up. Better performance for the people who are visiting your site. No one likes having a slow, um, you know, a slow browser on their phone. So the best, best way you do is, like I say, you go in, you upload your video, your photos, and then what you do is, like right here, you can see that this is 1250 pixels. So I'm going to keep it at 1250. But right here, the quality, okay? I'm going to change the quality to 71. 71 and I'm going to refresh it okay let it refresh for a minute okay now this is actually reduced the size down of the image even more now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take and go right over here where it says format and cloudinary and I'm going to go down and quick click excuse me webp hit refresh and it's very simple once you get to the size and you can put to scale, to fit, to feel. I always try to go with scale. Um, and what I do is, then what I do is just copy and paste and put it into my uh, website. Now, it allows your website to be faster, less data, data to, be, to be held in your server. And if you go through and you look at the way your website performs and a lot of people don't do this and I'm going to show you how I'm going to go here I'm going to click I'm going to bring up my website okay this is the cover image that I had before that you showed and if you look I'm going to right click view source and the source code is going to come down uh, let me see if I can find it right quick blah, 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 right here you can in the hero section and I use uh, bootstrap in the hero section you're going to see I actually where I put in the link for the WebP. And like I say, what that's going to do, that's going to allow you to have a faster website with less data. And the Cloudinary, it spreads, their servers are faster to hold the data. So it doesn't slow your website down as much. Now, you got to remember this term when you're working with your website. The term you got to use is I'm just going to reduce this down a little bit and move it over so you guys can see me. The The term to use is mobile, mobile first. Okay, when you design your website and you go to a lot of sites like GoDaddy or Square, it doesn't give you really the, the ability to customize the functions. So I learned how to use Bootstrap. I use Bootstrap. I design, design my own websites. But... One of the things a lot of people don't, especially photographers, web designers, and graphic people, they may know this. But anyway, I'm going to enlarge this again, just slightly. Let me pull it out so you guys can see on my screen. Okay. Now, what you see right here is I'm going to right, I'm going to click on the three dots on, on Google Chrome. Go to More Tools. Go to Develop, Developer Tools. And it's going to generate a report. Now, this is going to tell me how fast my website is. If I look, I'm going to pull this over a little bit. If you see right here, 
this is what it looks like on a mobile phone, a mobile device. Be it a phone, an Apple or a Android or a tablet, that's what it looks like. So I got it set for desktop. Okay, I'm gonna click. It takes just a couple of seconds, boom, and it comes up. Look at the speed and performance in the SEO of the website, okay? that's the way a website should be designed not slow and bulky now if you put in a lot of photos and you don't use webp this performance is going to go down and it's also going to affect the way your seo works for your your performance on your website so and i continually go through periods of time where i go through and i look where i may improve like you say right here i see the progressive web app uh, applications I need to go in and do a little work to there but majority as you can see you know 100 100 100 and this is on a um, this is for desktop now I'm gonna clear this and let's see how it does from mobile okay again it comes up it shows what it looks like on a mobile device well my performance is 88 Wow that's down okay that may be just because of the the time the network okay don't get discouraged it's always a good practice that if you're using the div tools in chrome to check your website's performance that you do it at least three times new report and generate wow look at that like i said there was a inf there was a fluctuation in the network that caused my website to slow down so now I'm up to 98%. I'll do it again. Generate a new report. Boom. Ninety-eight percent. So I'm pretty satisfied with that. Mm -hmm. That's telling me that the time to load, the time to inter interact is look two point seconds for my website to load. Now, this is another thing that people don't realize. When you develop a website, a lot of people develop it as a whole and that's a wrong concept each page should be invariably developed as a individual site okay and why I say that and I'll show you, I'm gonna click out of here and go mm -hmm. if I'm doing an SEO and this is my home page okay right here for my website Ron Carter photography I want to put in the, I want to keep the information limited so that I can go in and it's it's scrutinized by Google, Yahoo, you know, Bing, whatever, and it allow me to go further and further up the the search engine ladder, okay. And I continue wanting to work at that, stay at that high rating, okay. But like I said before, some people think of a whole a website as a whole site, okay. That's a falsehood. What you need to actually do is think about a website as each individual page as being an individual site so not only do you want to optimize one page you want them optimized every page so let's go for example you see my performance on this this page here I'm going to go over and just pull up my headshot page okay these are some little headshots if I right click on it I'm going to show and I look at it come up you're going to see that inspect you're going to come up and see that these images are in again I'll pull them up a little bit more WebP okay so I've optimized this site now again instead of going as a whole site concept I'm going to an individual page as a web as a website so I'm gonna go again with more tools developer tools I'm gonna to go back to web I mean desktop I'm gonna generate a report and let's see how we come out. Now I've got a lot more images on this page instead of just one background. I'm at 97%. I run a new report. Like I say, you try to do at least three reports to understand because there's a fluctuation in the network processing. Maybe four, more people are on it. It's at 96. Anyway, so we're going to go new report one more time. Boom, one more time. Generate the report. Again, at 96, so I'm doing pretty good. Best, best practices, I need to go in and adjust that up a little bit, and I'm going to work on that a little bit. Okay, so I've done that throughout my whole site. I can actually go back in again 
And we're going to go to, I use, let's see, let's go to the Galaxy Fold, okay? That's what it looks like on the Galaxy Fold, my website, okay? Let's say, for example, if we're going to go to a iPhone X, that's what it will look like, the dimensions. Uh, iPad Pro. Boom, that's what it's going to look like on the iPad. So responsive, we'll go back to the Galaxy S5, which I had it at originally. So you can see, you can actually go in and see how your website looks and performs on a particular uh, device. These are great tools. I think that everyone should be doing this. If not, you're not staying on top of your business. You're, not, you're losing clients. Because people don't like to wait around for a mobile device or even a, uh, a landline device. device. Um, I'm fortunate I got fiber uh, and I got the ultra high speed fiber. So mine's pretty quick for uploads and downloads. So and take in consideration that and reduce the amount of data you have on your website. Now, this is another thing that a lot of people don't think about when it comes to website design, especially photographers. Some websites only allow you a certain amount of data, okay, or bandwidth. So, say, for example, you're in a low-end website, and you're allowed 5 gigs a month or 10 gigs. I'm just throwing the numbers out there. So, what's going to happen is if you go over it, they're going to additionally charge you extra money for going over the bandwidth that's allowable for, for your purchase. So the best thing to do is go with a higher end website uh, hosting where you have the ability to get in to design your website, but you actually, you're not limited on the amount of, of uh, data that you're using over the bandwidth. So for example, if you have 30 huge images that only not only slow your website down, now you have those 30 images, at some point, people flipping through it, and I, believe me, from experience over the years, the majority of the people who look at your website are other photographers seeing how you do. Okay, statistically, the sales is one percent of sales. If you do more than that, you're doing really, really well. So every ten people, you're probably going to get a, at least a one or two people that's going to make a, a sale out of it. All those other people are fishing. They're photographers. They're looking at what you're doing, how much you're charging, uh, and that's that's what it's about. Anyway, this is a, a little thing I put out today uh, just to show you how, what the advantages are WebP of, versus the big bulky um, JPEG. If you use a JPEG and you convert it over to a WebP, and anytime, if you, even if you decide to use both, reduce the, re the, the resolution down to 71% or the quality down to 71%, it will not make a difference in the way people see. It will make a smaller file and you'll be able to get a, a faster results, more satisfaction, satisfaction for your customer. Anyway, my name is Ron Carter. Run, this is Ron Carter Photography. Make sure you like and subscribe below. And I know I've been slow about putting videos out. I'm going to try to put more. Uh, but anyway, with COVID, it's kind of slowed things down a little bit, but we're beginning to overcome that and get into the new year with a new outlook. Make sure you like and subscribe and click the buttons below and we'll see you on the next one.